Hey, what's up everyone? John here from testprepinsight.com, and today I'm going to be reviewing Rosetta Stone Japanese. I'll break down how the Rosetta Stone app and learning framework works, the strengths and weaknesses of this program as I see it, and whether I think it's ultimately worth it. And just as a heads up, because I'll just be covering the major highlights in this video and trying to keep things short, if you find you need some more detail at any point, you can always check out our full detailed written review of Rosetta Stone Japanese over on our website. An easy way to get there is just to Google Test Prep Insight Rosetta Stone Japanese Review. That's a quick way to find it. Okay, so I want to start by talking about how the Rosetta Stone Japanese program actually works because for one, most people know the name but don't really know how the program functions. And for two, Rosetta Stone Japanese is slightly different than the other Rosetta Stone language courses that I've used and reviewed. So let's start there. How the course is organized and what the lessons look like. So from a very high level, there are just 12 learning units in the entire Japanese program with each unit being made up of four lessons. So that's just 48 total lessons in the entire program. This is one of the first differences between Rosetta Stone Japanese and other Rosetta language courses like Spanish or German. Most others have 20 learning units, so the Japanese course is a little bit more truncated. And I know 48 lessons doesn't sound like much, but each lesson is pretty in-depth and lengthy, and they all progressively build on each other. Anyways, as for how each lesson works, each one is built around a core learning exercise that takes about a half hour to complete, then a number of secondary drills behind that core exercise, almost like class followed by homework in a way. And one really nice change that Rosetta Stone has made in the last year or so is that they've now broken down their core learning exercise into three separate parts. It used to be just one 30 minute exercise and you had to get through the whole thing in one go, but now it's three separate 10 minute parts, making it more manageable day to day. But even with that change, it still takes an hour plus to finish a full lesson. Some of the shorter lessons you can get done in under an hour, but the vast majority will easily take you more than a full hour with all of those secondary drills. But as for what those drills and exercises are actually like, the thing you need to know about Rosetta Stone is that the program is very image heavy. Almost every single individual drill uses images in some way or another. Sometimes the program will say something in Japanese and you match what was said to the right picture. Sometimes it's matching written kanji and kana to the images. Sometimes it's on you to speak in Japanese what's in the image and then get graded by the speech software. And sometimes the pictures are used to teach grammar. Basically, no matter what lesson you're in, Rosetta Stone focuses on pictures and immersion to teach you Japanese. The program is designed to have you create associations between what you're learning and imagery, allowing you to cut out English as a go-between. This forces you to rely more on organic connections between things and words than on memorization. And that concept is the same across all Rosetta Stone language courses. But one thing that is different with learning Japanese in Rosetta Stone than other European languages is phonetics. One nice aspect of being an English speaker learning another European language is that they rely on the Latin script alphabet, so you can usually at least phonetically sound out the words you're learning and understand the spellings. But with Japanese, Rosetta Stone expresses the words you're learning in traditional kanji and kana, so you can't really rely on phonetics like you could when learning Spanish, for example. So that does make the program more challenging. But anyway, that's more or less how the Rosetta Stone program works. Around the core lesson work, Rosetta does give you a bunch of bonus tools and resources like stories, on-demand video lessons, and audio companion lessons, but for your daily lesson work, that's how it goes. And by the way, again, I know I'm kind of flying through this, so if you want to see some examples of the Rosetta Stone drills and lessons, make sure to check out that full detailed written review that I mentioned earlier. I'll have it linked down below in the description. I have screenshots and more detail over there so you can get a better feel for what to expect. Okay, now before I get into what I think about this program, let's quickly talk about price and how Rosetta Stone compares to other apps. Essentially, Rosetta Stone has three different plans to choose from. There's a three-month subscription plan, that's $12 per month. There's a 12-month plan, that also goes for $12 per month. And then there's a lifetime plan, which is a one-time purchase and gets you access for life to all of Rosetta Stone's languages for $300. And the reason why the 12-month plan costs the same as the three-month plan is because Rosetta Stone is almost always running a discount on that package, and you can almost always find it for $8 per month. And similarly, the lifetime package, even though it retails for $300, you can almost always find a discount to bring that price down to $180 total. Now, comparing this to other Japanese apps, Rosetta Stone is sort of in the middle of the pack in terms of cost. It's more expensive than other Japanese language learning apps like Duolingo and Busu, but it's also cheaper than other programs like Pimsleur and Rocket Japanese. Basically, at $8 to $12 per month, I'd say their prices are pretty reasonable compared to others, especially if you can catch those sale prices. And again, on that point, Rosetta Stone is really aggressive with their deals and special promos, and you can almost 
always find a discount on their Japanese courses. So do make sure to check for deals and coupons. In fact, I'll actually do my best to keep the description below updated with the most current coupons and deals that I can find floating around out there. So give that text below the video screen a good look before buying. I frequently see Rosetta Stone discounted by 40% or more. Okay, so now that we've talked about pricing and how Rosetta Stone Japanese works, let's get into what I like and don't like about it. And let's start with the pros. Okay, so the first component of the Rosetta Stone Japanese program that I like, but I don't think necessarily everyone else will, is their immersive framework. Basically, they just toss you right into the fire and take away English as a crutch. There's hardly any use of English inside the program. Phrases and sentences are translated for you, and there are no English directions, or at least very few. Now, to be fair, you can actually toggle on translations within the program to see the English meanings, but this is generally discouraged by Rosetta Stone. They want you immersed in learning intuitively. Now, this might seem super frustrating, and it is at times, but by cutting out English as a go-between and learning the direct, raw meaning of words in Japanese, it really works, especially from the point of view of listening and speaking. Reading and writing is a lot tougher, but on the verbal side, I really like this approach. Then, the other major highlight of the Rosetta Stone program, in my opinion, is all of the images and pictures. If you're a visual learner, this app is going to complement your learning style really well. About half of the population learns visually, meaning that they need to see what they're learning in order to retain it. And for this group of people, the image-heavy Rosetta Stone lessons are great. I generally like audio-based lessons, and I'm a huge proponent of those programs when they do it right, like Pimsleur and Rocket Japanese. But for visual learners, this is where Rosetta Stone has a nice leg up on the competition. And the last big thing going for Rosetta Stone over those other apps are all of the cool bonus resources that they provide. With all of the nice supplemental tools that they give you, Rosetta is one of the most complete and comprehensive Japanese programs on the market. Now, to be clear, other apps do give you some nice bonus tools also, but not to the same level. And of all the different cool extras you get with Rosetta, I particularly like the stories. These are kind of like short podcasts with transcripts that become available to you as you complete learning units. They cover all kinds of topics and genres and allow you to work on your listening and speaking skills with some context. Plus, they're also a really nice way to break up the standard Rosetta Stone lessons from time to time. Okay, so that's what I like about Rosetta Stone. Now let's flip over to the negatives. But before I get to that, I should just mention that every single month here at Test Prep Insight, we actually give away a free language learning subscription to one lucky person. It's super simple dinner. Everyone out there is eligible. I'll put all the details down below in the description on how to get entered, but just know it takes like 10 seconds and hey, you never know. You could win a totally free Rosetta Stone lifetime subscription. Okay, so the first negative of the Rosetta Stone program as I see it is the lack of direct grammar instruction. And this is a bit of an issue with a language like Japanese because grammar rules are so different from English. In essence, Rosetta Stone teaches grammar in the same way that they teach everything else in the program, organically and through intuition. Meaning you don't get a nice, neat little explanation in English of how to talk in the past tense or conjugate verbs. Instead, they teach you these things more indirectly through those picture-based drills that I talked about earlier. And while there is some merit to doing things this way, I personally prefer more direct instruction when it comes to grammar. I'd rather just have things explained to me in plain English up front and then practice with speaking exercises rather than trying to figure it out organically. I just think doing it that way can get frustrating. Then, the second downside of this program for me is that the drills can become a little monotonous. Because every single exercise includes images, they're all kind of derivative of one another. I mean, it's not nearly as bad as I've seen with some other apps, but with Rosetta Stone, sometimes it does feel a little repetitive. Their lessons just don't have the variety you would get with a Duolingo or Memrise. And the final drawback that I want to call out is that I actually think Rosetta Stone could really do itself a favor by creating more of a community feel among its users. One of the reasons that apps like Duolingo and Busu have become so popular is that they've done an awesome job of building a competitive and collaborative environment with its user base. Users compete in leagues, connect socially, do friend quests, and generally speaking, just learn together, which definitely helps for sticking with it. If Rosetta Stone just incorporated a little bit of this, like some kind of buddy system, I think that could go a long ways towards generating more engagement. But anyway, that about does it for the details, so time for my final verdict. Is Rosetta Stone a good app to learn Japanese? I would say likely yes, and I hedge a little bit because it kind of depends on your learning style. If you're a visual learner, then 100% yes, I think it's worth it. But if you're more of an auditory learner and you're looking for some more traditional audio-based lessons, then Rosetta Stone might not be the best fit. In that case, I would check out Rocket Japanese or Pimsleur, two very good programs as well. Technically, Rosetta does have stories and audio companion lessons, but that's definitely not the main focus of this course. Rosetta Stone is much more designed for visual learners and teaches through an immersive, organic learning framework. 
But on the whole, I do like Rosetta Stone and think it is effective for learning Japanese, especially if you're a visual learner and looking for a more active, hands-on program. But anyway, that's all I've got for you. I hope this video has been helpful and you learned a little something about Rosetta Stone Japanese. If so, make sure to return the favor by subscribing to our channel, liking this video, and dropping me a quick comment below. That would be really appreciated. And again, if you want to see that full, detailed, written review of Rosetta Stone Japanese that I mentioned earlier in this video, just hop on over to our website. Again, that's testprepinsight.com. Or check out the other videos we have on our YouTube channel. We've got a bunch of great content out there. But as always, thanks for watching. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one.